And uh, just sort of quickly add, adding Cavadix's name to the NPC list. <laughs> Oops. Nice. Um, yeah, so... Uh, no, no, oh, well, I just updated a couple of things on uh, the waiting screen. Uh, Ooh, so I want to see. Says, it says ending soon instead Whoa. of starting soon. <laughs> I also you updated well. levels to, <clears throat> from level soon. 8 to level 9. Um, but yeah, that was all it did. I just thought it was funny. Um, yeah, so where we're going to pick up is uh, you guys had just left the sacrificial chamber uh, and had uh, crossed the uh, archway uh, and had arrived out of the arcane gate. <clears throat> so that that is where uh, you guys uh, currently stood. Um, I guess, uh, are you heading directly back over to uh, the obelisk, obelisk, or is there something else that you want to do beforehand? Um, I assume we'll kind of like maybe take a sh quick short rest and make sure that we're all feeling a bit better before we go back out because we don't really know what was up with this dude as much as we're like, hey, well done, we've done this. And I, I don't think we want to walk back in there, back, back inside until we've actually had a proper rest. True. Sure. Uh, well, you wouldn't be walking back inside. You'd be walking uh, kind of around the tower uh, like, to the I, obelisk. I, mean, like, I, I was thinking when we had finished that we were leaving to get out of there at the moment with the thought of possibly going back in to, to actually check the place out properly, but we were all, like, <clears throat> scared of death. Sure. Um, yeah, so you guys can definitely take a... I, I suppose a, a short rest um, and send an hour around the arcane gate um, where Cavadix had previously left you. He, he's no longer around that area. Um, and if you do, uh, I suppose if you are spending an hour there, uh, then I'm assuming Havoc would cast um, his tiny hut for you guys to rest in. Um mm -hmm and kind of allow you guys to sort of regain and, and kind of regain some hit points and spend some hit dice, stuff like that. Um, but... Uh, and head out to the obelisk is the plan. Yeah, and then sort of after an hour... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just... I mean, not that it kind of matters because I'm, I'm not going to roll on it and don't even have my dice out. But if, like, this were a kind of proper session or um, for kind of... <clears throat> flavor i suppose i don't know um kira wouldn't have been able to um be kind of she was too restless she would have been too restless to regain any like mm -hmm. to rest enough to even regain any points so if if we were continuing i wouldn't have rolled for it mm. just to kind of sure uh, so i suppose with a couple of a couple of your groups still shaken up and um sort of maybe a little bit more on edge uh now you you do um take the short trip over to the obelisk and uh as you sort of around the the base of the arcane uh sorry not the arcane the ob uh the obsidian tower uh what you see is where the obelisk once stood uh is now four levitating what would appear to be sections of the obsidian tower that have, has split into four. So if you imagine like a, a spike, uh, it has split kind of crossways down the middle and separated diagonally and floated upwards. And what you see as you start to get closer that in the center of where the obelisk once stood is a small uh, portal. Um, or, or what looks to be some sort of arcane portal uh, on the ground. Have it um, Not from where you can tell at the moment. Uh, you're not too sure, um, kind of, uh, I suppose, where he is. 
Um, and as you sort of approach closer, Kira, you would pick up first. Uh, you see um, attached into one, uh, sorry, two of the split parts of the obelisk is a broken staff. So it's almost like it has split down the middle and is kind of sticking out of two parts of the obelisk where that keyhole uh, or porthole was in the obelisk. And as you approach, uh, you find a small... It looks like a goo, but it's more, I suppose solid than a goo uh, or like a a, a, vis a vic vicus viscous 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 uh liquid it's it's more solid than that um like a jelly again more solid than that it, it's more like uh I'm trying to think it's like almost like a ghostly sugar, plasma like a ghostly plasma <laughs> um and what you see next to that is another pile of what appears to be shedded skin. Gross. Another pile of shedded skin, you said. One that you had oh, previously seen. Fuck. Or what something that looks like previously seen. Oh mate killed him and got out. You reckon oh, he killed him? I reckon he killed him, yeah. So he, this is he, the he two different colored eye. The yeah. two different colored eye guy. Oh, oh, I got, yeah, no. killed, killed him. The sequester. Then... Can I tell them what you told me? Uh, roll a, uh, <laughs> roll a, roll, oh, I'll, 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 do you have your dice with you? I can grab them real quick. <laughs> I was just going to say, roll a d20, and uh, we'll see if your fourth wall <laughs> information comes through into Boy, the FA, just out of curiosity. A, d a d20, you said? Yeah, just roll a d20. If you roll a higher than a 10, you can you can tell them. Alright. 11. 11. Oh! Boy. What, so, we, what, what did you... Bro, what was going on? I was so distracted. So we were, I, we were like chatting, we were like hanging out in the, in, the, in the voice channel, and I was playing something, and we were talking about something about heterochromia and the multicolored eyes. And I was like, yeah, like... Like in like D four, like she Lilith has multicolored eyes, and they like pitch this idea that like like that's like special and blah blah blah. And then casually Ben goes, "Well, you know what else has multicolored eyes? Changelings." And I was like, "Oh yeah, cool." And I just keep playing. And then like two minutes later, I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like, like multicolored eyes, and I made the connection that like yeah. <laughs> so, yeah by the yeah. way, so yeah, a changeling. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Or at least my okay. spin on a changeling, because changelings yep. don't like actually shed their skin. This is my yeah. sort yep. of version of them. They they shed their skin. Um, the whole ganger style thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I suppose the four of you not knowing exactly what this means, but it ringing a bell to someone that you had previously encountered, and the fact that you have come across the second shedding of skin uh, would indicate to you that this person that you freed unbeknownst to who they were or what they were capable of um, has what appeared to have escaped into this portal. Oh, shit. Um, but the no. four of you... <laughs> Just look at yours. We're going home, right? That's not our problem. I know we unleashed it, but not right now, right? We're going home. It might become okay. our problem eventually. We'll deal with it then. Maybe a stray orc arrow will catch it in the orc war. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. That whole debacle to go home to. Starting a pub the, um... in the snow doesn't sound so bad now. I think that's what I want to do. The, uh, the four of you stand around this, sh this shattered obelisk. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, like this, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and this this random thing, uh, in the ground, um, still not sure as to what this place is or what the sacrificial chamber you just came from is. Is there anything you'd like to do um, in this moment?
Can I roll for memory of the person up in the top of the tower? Um, sure. Roll a roll a d twenty. Um, if you roll higher than a ten, uh, oh, yes. you gotta make it higher than a ten, right? Well, what do you have a history modifier? Fifteen plus intelligence, and then like add your intelligence modifier to it. Plus five and plus five. There you go. Roll higher than a five. Roll higher than a five. Okay. You watch me roll a natural one here. Oh, I just didn't even roll. Yes, that was that was a natural one for sure. (laughs) Missed the box. (laughs) Natural one as a human. Natural, yeah, natural one at rolling. Twenty-three. It dawns on Tonk as he stands at the precipice of this portal that there is still a unknown being chained at the top of the tower, and that that would also mean venturing back in to the Obsidian Tower. We're at the portal, right? You are at the portal. Can someone and roll a Can someone roll a d twenty for me? Um, Ben, I think you know what I'm rolling yeah. for. So. Uh, I, I will roll it for you. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what the result is. It is a 18. Okay. Uh, there's no indication of where the portal goes, though, is there? Nope. But something rings very clear in your mind, and that was the symbol of chronomancy that was on the arcane, the obelisk. Line. There's no way he doesn't. Um, yeah. I step through. Oh! I just walk off. I just step straight through. Honk, as you're remembering and sort of kind of working out what your next steps are, Kira in a bit of a shambled mindset and Ayla just sort of, I suppose, taking everything in you out of the corner of eye of all three of you, you see Havoc just take a step and fall and drops into the portal and disappears. That's not something I expected. Although maybe I should become, I should think more that that might happen. I don't know if I can leave someone up there forever. It's not in my nature. I don't expect you guys to come with me, but um, I would be very uh, thankful for the company. What if it's worse? What if it's not? Do we owe that to them? You may not, but... Well, if you do, I do. I feel like I need to. There's been too many times on this journey that I may have taken the the path that's easiest, not necessarily what was right. I think it's time for me to do the right thing. I cannot go back. I understand. I'm not. I'm not forcing you to come with me. Will you wait here, or are you going to jump in? I will wait here. I think one thing before Havoc jumped in, he would have he you would have seen his posture change, and him go. Well, that was terrifying. Uh, I'm leaving this place. Thank you. And then he just would have gone in. I will say, uh, I know you guys don't have a dice, uh, or Joe, are your dice nearby? I will get your. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You roll something. Yeah. Uh, I need all three of you to roll a d20 and tell me what I, the result is. I hate that that's the roll that won. 
of yeah, all the other ones. Every that other role so is so funny. Better. The one that I do is hilarious. That's hilarious. But man. that's the one that wins. Oh, yeah. that's so good. Uh, Eleven for me. Ten. Uh huh. Uh huh. I hate that so much. Oh, no. It dawns on two of you. Havoc was the one that had the ice crystal. <gasps> oh, oh my god. I forgot that I had the ice crystal. <laughs> That's why I said two of you, not three of you. That helps us <laughs> complete the right to get up. No, no. No, that was the ice crystal one that Strixnor dropped as he died. As he, uh, what he turned into. Oh, shit. So his. Yeah. Essence, um, potentially. My role makes sense. And it does make sense, actually. Yes. Well, thematically, that is very accurate. <laughs> that makes. Well, I'm with you, Tonk. We should probably make it as quick as we possibly can. If we're longer than a what, an hour? You should go. I'll look at Kira. Yeah. She's just staring at the ground. Fine, have it if you can. He's got the ice crystal. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> would I... Would my insight have picked up that he changed... With the with the pack with the changes you've noticed before, you would have 100%. you would have realized it. Yes. Yeah. I, I, Havoc is whoever his master is, like in his own brain or whatever it is, whatever whatever's happening. Professor with, Bond with Havoc. Yeah. Somewhere when, there's as as you say, mentioned. as you say the words, whoever's in his brain, you see Kira kind of like, like twitch almost like. <clears throat> Kira? I'm just staring at the... She's just staring at the grass. We're gonna... We'll see you soon. And I'm gonna start running back to the... The gate to go up the top. All right behind you. <clears throat> okay. Um, Kira, I'll come back to you in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Tonk and Ayala, you travel back... Uh, the way you just came, um, arrive at the arcane gate. Uh, fortunately, Cavadix, before disappearing, told you that once completing the right, you were able to move th uh, freely through the arcane barrier. So you take the steps up and pass through the arcane barrier, travel across the archway back into the obsidian tower, and then back up that huge hulking staircase that led you into the original sacrificial pit where you see the bodies of those two hags laying there still. You see blood sprung about the room, and you see the massive 150-foot-length 150 length, 150 foot length bridge that crosses um, the sacrificial pit. Where Anything going? else that's changed? It looks pretty, pretty much, much the, the same, same way that you left it. Okay. Um, is there anything I can recall as to where the... Like, the direction that we've traveled as opposed to where that tower was that we were looking at to see which side of the building that might be on um and is there a door on that particular side that i would think that there's been? there's only one there's there's two only two doorways in this chamber the one that you had just entered through and the one on the far side of the chamber i'll go through the one on the far side then so you start running down this massive bridge um and eventually reach this large pit that you saw from the other end but didn't know what was in it. And as you approach, what you do see is a large vat of bubbling red liquid. You can tell from this distance that it is blood. And you see that there are, like, bones and skulls moving about in this blood and, like, bubbling up and then falling back down. Um, and you do see that there are kind of almost bodies um, that slowly float up and then back down. Um, and it is, there is a putrid stench in this area. And as Bruce you start to... Be with me. 
and then you move around the edge of this pit and find your way towards uh, the other doorway on the other the doorway on the other side. And what you see is a quite a thin stairway leading upwards. And as you start to step upwards, you realize that it, it starts to curve around um, and looks like it moves into a separate area. Area. We're gonna jump back over to Kira. Kira, as you're standing on or near the obelisk and, and this portal, having seen Havoc just jump through and, and Tonk and uh, Ayala run off back to the place where you had just passed and was brought back. You don't feel whole. You... This place, this pocket dimension... It feels so unfamiliar and irksome to you that there is a very strong urge to leave as quickly as possible. But there's also kind of almost a familiarity of this place now, like for having been here so long. Is there anything you'd like to do? Am I feeling, would it be fair to say that I kind of have just as much of an, of an urge to say, step through this portal, regardless of where it goes, as long as it's out, uh, as well as wanting to stay, knowing Ayala and Tonk. I would say that hopefully it is be a, back. I would say that it is a 50, 50 pool right now. Your urge to leave and your connection with Tonk and Ayala <laughs> is is teetering on either side if you'd like to roll a dice decide you can or uh, I, yeah, that I you'd would. like to do yeah do as so. something we kind of spoke about with um, mm -hmm. the end of the last campaign I don't want to be making all the decisions in terms of temptations and stuff like that so Sure. Yeah, I do want to roll a bit more. Um, one would it be one to ten. It's one to 10, 20? 11 to twenty. Yeah. Um, which which is which? Yeah, eleven to twenty. I stay. Okay. Huh. Sixteen. I just sixteen. Yeah. With the one of the strongest urges you've ever felt to sort of leave somewhere uh, without your friends, you manage to steal yourself and kind of take a step back from the portal and, and know that I should wait for them. This is the right thing to do. But that familiarity just grows a little bit stronger. Conking Ayala. As you're heading up these stairs and and kind of following the staircase around, the light here is dimming quite a bit um, compared to so the chamber that you were just in where it was fairly well lit, albeit a dark place, but still uh, visible. You're now kind of venturing almost in darkness. And as you start to round these staircases a little bit more, you do see a brightish white light um, kind of peeking around the, the corner of one of these, that, this rounded staircase. And as you move closer towards it, it the, br the bright light starts to get closer and eventually the staircase straightens out and you can see that the landing or, or, or the, the final part of the staircase flattens out and as you step onto kind of the flat floor, you see a bedroom. It is a pretty dingy looking bedroom, something that you would probably have seen in sort of a back alley inn or maybe a really cheap hotel, something like that. Just it's, it's pretty dingy. 
wooden bed frame, pretty dank looking bed sheets, things like that. There's a small table and chair in a corner where there's a couple of candles. The bright light doesn't match the light that is giving off in this room. What you see on the far side of the room is a young man or young male. And he is very skinny. And he is chained up in the same way that Kira had explained to you that there was a man bound by shackles. And he is not moving. Does he look, um, does he look familiar in any way? Is it like a radiating glow that's coming from him that would like once, suggest... once you pass once you pass the precipice of the staircase, the glow's gone. The glow's gone. Yeah, so what, what I meant was as you were going up the staircase, the, the archway or the entranceway to oh, this, right. this thing was giving off that bright light. And then as you stepped through, that's when you were greeted with this dingy, like very dully lit room. Right. Uh, sorry, what, were your, what was your question about the, the male? Does he look, is he just like, like a normal like male? He doesn't like, he's just a, a normal skinny like chained up uh is there anything on him are there any markings i mean he doesn't him? look n normal he's extremely malnourished yeah um but other than that he, he it looks there's, there's nothing no really L, there's nothing else telling he he's, he's not wearing any clothes he's naked is he human he is human he's naked he's naked are there any so there's no markings on him there's no markings on him. I'll do up a do a medicine check real quick to see if he is alive. Can I see that he's breathing? Uh, as you get closer, you can see that his ribs and very clearly his ribs are slowly moving in and out. There's no like arcane sigils or glyphs around him in the room or anything like Feel that. Feel free to do a perception check or investigation yeah. check. Do Both of you if you'd like. Do a perception check. Uh, 15. 16 on investigation. <clears throat> you both take a moment to sort of surveil the room and quickly do a once over and you can't find any arcane sigils or traps or anything that would indicate anything devious um passive insight or i can roll for it has he noticed us walking in he's unconscious he's unconscious uh, and his hands are completely bound he's, sh he's shackled yeah. up to this uh, it, it look kind of looks like a, a almost an archway for a fireplace um but is not it, it's just like bricked behind it basically and he's just right. shackled um, like he's not, uh, standing up. So his yeah. knees are sort of touching on the ground, uh, yeah. but the, the chains are not long enough to, to let his arms drop. So right. they are still up. Um, but yeah, his head, his head is slunched in front of him and he's sort of like kneeling, uh, like leaning to one side. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to walk over and I'm going to... I cast cure wounds on him at level one. Sure. And you walk over, point. and you start the arcane, um, I suppose process of casting your cure wounds and your your staff of lights, and you feel the the spell take place. And he hadn't lost any hit points. Um, you just want to, do you want to roll? Because the spell still goes off. You want to roll a d one a d twenty for me? Sure. It's the first time I've used all the spell slots of this stuff. Oh, oh interesting. Imagine that. So on a, what, on one, a one, it shatters? On a one, this on is a one, it vanishes in a flash of light and is lost forever. Should I, f f should I f film the roll? Do it. Go for it. 
That looks like a small number. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought that was a one from above. Then. Probably the closest gone. looking number it could oh be. Oh my then. goodness, I almost died. That would, have, that would have been uniquely poetic and that very sad if we haven't followed on from this campaign. Unreal. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry, continue. So uh, you eventually you do feel the, the spell take place. He hadn't lost any hit points, um, but it does jolt him awake. Mm -hmm. And you hear him take a very shallow breath in. Um, hi. Hey, can we help you at all? He very slowly lifts his head and sort of turns it towards you to meet your eyes and you see the most gaunt malnourished and as far as you can tell young human male look back at you he doesn't say a word but you're inside is high enough to see that the the look that he is giving you is is a look of help uh i guess tonk probably can't see this but like behind tonk within range ale is very apprehensive so she's not actively standing there with the spear at a throat but she's kind of ready in case things go awry to make like holding an action essentially before I let you down I'm just going to pull out some like a part of my ration pack and I want to just like try and feed him some stuff while I'm talking uh, well, first of all his hands are shackled um, so no no I'm not saying I'm not if saying, you're trying like, to feed it to him I'm trying to feed it to him uh, he attempts to uh, but it is he barely has enough energy to lift his head. Yeah, right. So barely to cool. try and chew something. You're going to have to mama bird him. Uh, yeah. Blech. Not mama birding him. <laughs> That's not, not happening. Uh, not do happening. it. Gets caught up in the beard and everything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Suck it out. Suck it out. <laughs> get out of my beard. Can you... <laughs> Before I let you go... I need to ask you some questions to make sure that I'm not putting myself and my friend here in danger. He blinks in agreement. How did you get here? Can um, answer? his uh, his response is slow, but of he very softly says, Always have been here. Did you know Kaza Dix? He just slowly shakes his head. Drixnor made you his prisoner? He slowly nods his head. For what? Why were you pr imprisoned? He doesn't answer. There's almost a look of confusion on his face. When when he ask, answers the question about um, Strixnor, is he telling the truth? Uh, I'm not going to make you roll for it. He's telling the truth. Okay. Um, your, your passive insight is high enough here, yeah, and cool. he's he's not be he's. He, he doesn't have the he doesn't have the strength to try and lie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to. Uh, how do I get him out? How thick are the chains and stuff? Are they like? They appear to be fairly standard chains. Yeah. Like shackles and chains. Um. Ayla, is this something you can help me with getting? I like the chains. Does mm. isn't my thing. You ready to? Let... Tell, I, I feel like he's. I feel like he's telling the truth. I feel like this, he doesn't have yeah. enough life in him to lie. Hmm. Poor guy. And I'll lean my spear against the wall and get up my lockpicking set and 
try to free him. Go on. Um, not going to make you roll for it. It's they're not magical. They're not any way intricate. They are the most basic of. He didn't need much shackle and chain to be restrained. In his I mean, condition, cat, right? Yeah, yeah, not at all. Um, <clears throat> so after a moment, you quickly uh, kind of break the locks on these two chains and his arms very quickly fall down to his side and he basically slumps over uh, and falls into a bit of a sort of fetal position, um, barely able to hold himself up. We're going to quickly jump back over to Kira. Kira, as you spend another... 10 minutes here waiting for Tonk and Ayala to get back and another 10 minutes has passed since Havoc has gone through this portal. Questions start to come to you that what what is Havoc doing on the other side? It's been a while. Is he waiting for us? Has he left? He has the crystal. I'm pretty sure I was dead. Before Strixhaven. He, he was down. Yeah, for I didn't, no, no, I didn't no, but Tonk, Tonk said it before he left. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but I guess, yeah. Well, you heard, you heard Tonk say something about uh, Havoc having a crystal and it sounded yeah. important. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All good. Do they need my help? You start to think for Tonk and for Ayala, has something gone wrong? Do I need to go back in the tower? Do I need to really go back in that place that made me feel this way? That made me feel this way? Roll another d20. Oh. That made me feel this way. You take two steps and you fall through the portal. Oh. Oh. Tonk and Ayala, as this young boy falls uh, prone to the ground, there is a feeling you get when you see someone that is so disheveled and just in need of help, it's almost compulsive that you just want to help them. That is the feeling that you're getting right now. And Tonk, you were feeling it probably more earlier. Ayala, that feeling is creeping up on you strongly. How yeah. tall is he? Is he like tall? Hard to tell. He... Hard to tell from uh, kind of him being in the, in the position that he is. But you would assume he's probably standing at about five eight, five nine. Yeah, he's not cool. not very tall. Yeah, but he's but taller than but taller than me. He's, he's taller than you, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think, I think we just have to get out of here. Ayala, we'll grab him. Yeah, in that moment, um, it reminds me of us helping the the kids at the orphanage, and kind of like brings me all the way back to the thoughts that I had leaving um, for Neverwinter and kind of the purpose of that. Um, I'll get the, uh, I had nabbed a, a pretty nice shirt from the smuggler's den. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take that out. I'll drape it over <clears throat> his shoulders and kind of help him up into a position that I can, we can, we can help carry him out, get some clothes well, on. A pair of, spare pair of pants that he could wear as shorts. <laughs> I, I, I'll say you'd be able to fashion something around his waist yeah, um, yeah. on not shorts or pants or anything like that but it's just something that covers his lower half yeah. um, and you're able to do that and sort of help him to his feet and start to kind of basically hold him up as you start to kind of exit this place you know one thing I haven't thought of yet and I don't know what we're going to do about it but if this portal goes back to where we came in, he won't make it back to Icewind Dale. Um, I'll slip the ring 
of warmth off my finger and slide it onto his thumb, just in case. <clears throat> yeah. Sure. Uh, I'll help you. I'll help you, but I don't know if I can. I can't carry him. I think. I think I can. I'll, with the I'll two give of you helping, I... with the two of you helping, you're able to start to move him towards the the entrance where you came in. And as you do, you are both kind of greeted with a big kind of flash of light, but not physically shunted or jostled about it. Oh, it is a very smooth transition as if you were just stepping through a doorway and you are on the outside of the arcane gate. Hmm. We're like a little bit surprised by that, obviously. Yeah, was that that wasn't you? It wasn't me. I think I did it. Just kidding. Okay. Wow. It's, you're 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 getting very good, Ayla. Mm -hmm. As you <laughs> step right, kind of you take another step out from the arcane gate, you notice that the young boy is drifting in and out of consciousness, but not from kind of so it's like, like sleep is scared scared to like uh, like you he's going to pass or anything like that but he's just struggling to catch uh retain consciousness in his state yeah you both start to move back towards the obelisk and as you kind of about 60 feet away you see that there's no one standing around it and you're immediately both filled with a sense of dread Kira stepped through. She's she's gone. And as you start to get closer to the portal, that that kind of unknowingness feeling and sort of fear starts to creep on a little bit more. And you there's kind of a pull of should we really be stepping through this portal or we kind of have to step through this portal now. Do we remember there's the way back? Like if the way that we came in, do we, do we remember that's the way that we can go back? You are certainly aware that that where you entered in, um, to the obsidian house, but you're not sure if that is going to exactly lead to a exit. We don't know where this goes though. We don't. But if that's where Kira is, that's where we need to be as well. Same as, same as Havoc. In whatever state he's in. And, um, I think it's yeah. We just need to take a leap of a leap of faith. A leap of faith. Blah, 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 blah. Is it big enough that we both could go in at the same time? Uh yeah, yeah. It's it, it's you can both step through at the same time. That that's that's uh, it's big enough to do that. Um, but after Tonk kind of says you sometimes need to take a leap of faith. There's a a feeling of maybe he's right. Tonk, are you stepping through? I'm going to, as much as I can, I'm going to try and reach around the door. There's a genuine feeling of you being able to step forward with an agreement of someone else. So yeah. uh, if, if that is sort of your gesturing motion, Ayala, are you reciprocating? Or is there a hesitance it, there? There's a little bit of hesitancy. It's because the the unknown... Um, and the feeling I got of dread thinking about Kira having gone in here and, and that gave me a bad feeling, but I don't feel like I have any option, but before I agree and go with, um, I'll look down. Is he, is this person conscious at the moment or no? Uh, in this moment, no. Okay. 
and then I'll go with Tonk. And as there, as Tonk, as you feel Ayla's reciprocating motion to move forward, you both take a step and drop into the portal. Dave. Yes. As that urge comes over you and you feel the change and Von looks or, or, or looks at the portal and you, as Havoc, looks past Von seeing that he is taking control and you feel him take a step and fall through the portal. You are greeted with a almost warm embrace. Uh, both Von and Havoc feel it as you are shunted to a bright summer's day. Ooh. And you look around and you can see trees and you're standing on grass. This portal is not here. The portal is not there that just sent you here. Oh. And you can see a road probably 100, 150 feet from you. And you can see that there's a horse and carriage being drawn and someone that is, is riding on it. And you look past him and you can see a city. You don't recognise it. And there's a feeling of this feels better, but also where am I? There's a quite a strong feeling of confusion. Does Vaughn recognise the place? Havoc won't, but um, because Vaughn is who he is, and I know what I know of him, I will let you roll a history check. Roll if... for me, please. Oh, sorry. I forget you don't have a... Uh, I do not have anything here. <laughs> All right. Um, do you know if one would have any modifiers to a history check? I think it was the same as... Yes, history's intelligence. Plus two, right? He, he'd be... No, no, no. Yeah, he's he's, he's a five. wizard. So he's, he'd have plus oh, five at least. Yeah, if he was right. proficient, it'd be plus nine. So uh, I'd say he'd probably be proficient in it. So go plus eight, I think. 18 I rolled a in. 13. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so 18 so or 20. He, so he would it would be plus 20. Mm-hmm. Von does recognize it. Um, before he actually thinks about the name, the thought of that's not possible comes across him. Oh. Oh. Am I... Does Von click on that I'm like, I'm, I'm through time and place? Hero. Oh, <laughs> dirty little bitch. <laughs> As you step through the portal, the feeling of nothingness is what hits you first. As hard as it is to explain, the feeling of nothing being around you, nothing, there's no gravity, there's no air, there's nothing below your feet. When you move, you can't feel wind or air or anything like that. It is just abyss around you. And it is terrifying. And after what feels like a minute, five minutes, you are greeted with an overcast day. It is pretty gloomy. It's not rainy or stormy or anything like that. There's just cloud cover and a small amount of dew on the grass. You also see with your high perception a road about 150 feet in front of you and you see another town no 
city in the distance. And you go, I don't recognize this place, but there is something similar to the city. The walls look like something you've seen before. The closest thing that you can link them to is Neverwinter. Punk and Ayala. Oh, shit. As you step through this portal with this unknown male, <clears throat> you... While you can't communicate while kind of in what appears to be some sort of teleportation, uh, the feeling of kind of moving through space is a very unusual one and you don't know whether you are moving at hyper speed or moving at zero speed at all it is just a an extremely unusual experience and something that you will probably never quite get over but after a moment you arrive to a relatively cold day it's early evening as best you can tell there's a couple of bits of rain here and there oh we're outside neverwinter you see the huge towering cities and and the wall that surrounds it and the massive castle at the center of it. And it takes you a moment, but you look down at the person you just rescued and they're conscious now. And they look around and He looks up to you, Tonk. Down. And something that you didn't notice before, but he has a couple of scars on his ears. And he looks up to you and he goes, where's my sister? And that's the end of the Twisted Web. Thank you very much. This was <laughs> very fun. Can't wait to pick it up soon. What? <laughs> Dude, that's cut his ears. Now, now, I didn't know. I had no idea. But like, I wanted to ask his name before we. Like I, the whole time, I, I was like, "That's why I asked before stepping in the portal." I was like, "Is he conscious?" I and I was like, "I wanted I to ask his, his name, name in case." Been cut away, and so I didn't <laughs> ask it again. No. That's so good. I mean, why it, when the fuck are we? Yeah. When and are we at different? Are we at different times? I think we are because he described it as sunny for you and rainy for us and yeah. Yeah. So like, I it's think different it is days different. and like how spread is it? But it kind of makes sense because we went through at different times. So is the times, time yeah, time moving a... differently as we? Yeah. Well, like we'd already talked, we'd already been told that time was moving differently in yeah. this thing. So it's like, how long has it been? Is it? further in the future or it's is also, it, are we in the past it's also possible it's a time dilation within a time dilation right so like whatever yeah. this portal is could have been dilating time inside of a pocket dimension so yeah what a cliffhanger ending that's cool though oh like man <laughs> you know joel <laughs> no i ha i uh, i thought it would be cool <laughs> and when he said he's human i was like oh mm, okay he looks was hoping, human. He specifically he describe, actually never said. Yeah, he didn't. He, describe. he said he looks it, and like originally, you actually pulled back from saying man yeah. or human. You he pulled back a, from a, it. A so it took me, it took me a second. That's why I said male. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Ah. Uh, 
I've I've like so like one I'm like what a time for um for Von to finally take over. After yeah, I know that was awesome. That was so. So cool. what is taking over over? No, no, no. So uh, Von Von, you guys. I, I have rolled dice so many times for intervals where Von has wanted to, to do something that Havoc Interview. hasn't wanted to. And each time, it's a, it's a dice roll to see if he wins or not, as as to whether or not he can force his way. And, and Dow's been rolling like sixes of, and sevens. Yeah, so like <laughs> Von just hasn't. So Von almost stole Cavadix's staff. Um, oh, he tried, he wanted to. So bad. Me too. Is that when um, he changed? And the, so when he changed, when he when he got the wand, that was when one I thing. Know, so like, when I noticed it. Yeah. So when he yeah. got and 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 like Von, I guess I can say it now Von was never evil. Really, he's he's like maybe he's, lawful evil. He's just a really like, bad narcissist. He's yeah. He's just a narcissist. He's just a bit of a dick. Like, but like he wasn't. He didn't dislike you guys. He didn't. Ha he didn't have anything against you. And he was like, yeah, we'll go with it. But at that point where he's at the portal, he's like. I ain't going back in you there. You don't have any reason to chance. stay. So like, yeah, yeah. Vaughn would have no. No. So like, stay. Havoc is like, oh, we 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 might want to stay, and in that pool, Vaughn's like, not a chance, and just yeah. like overtakes. And I'm like, but like, there are so many times that I wanted Vaughn to take over, um, because I had a separate character sheet made for Vaughn, of like yeah. the spells that he knew in comparison to, to what Havoc knew, and like he, mm -hmm. but he had to abide by Havoc's physical body and physical limits. But I just, oh, it just yeah. didn't happen. And instead, he takes over at that point to be like, nah, and just pieces out. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thought that uh, Von had when he was like, "That's not possible," is because it is. It was the earliest form of what Neverwinter once was. Yeah. Okay. So, so he knows that he's gone back in time because he goes, "That's not possible." Yeah, yeah. It's like I can't be here. That's not. Mm. Oh. oh. Does it look? Did it look normal to us? It looked normal to you. Oh. So you guys might be in you, more present, more of present day. Joel's yeah. not so far like far back, and then we're present. I can't Maybe. wait till you guys go into Neverwinter and find a statue of Havoc. <laughs> <laughs> Von's just made himself a fucking lord <laughs> cause he's so yeah. fucking he's so fucking wood I'm gonna <laughs> let, let people some... stew on what they would like to do because there's potential for changes uh, I mean mm. Kira now has time like on her side of things cause technically she's in the past as well you mm -hmm. guys are in the present with Someone, Derek. It's with Derek, isn't it? Isn't that his name? Yeah, it is. It's at least that's what, not. That's what Kira's told us. Her brother's name was. <clears throat> probably not the best thing for Kira to have time on her hands with no mm -hmm. one with her right now. Yeah, yeah. It's well, like, really the question not. is, if I'm if I'm further back and I figured out what happened. I may keep an eye on that spot, and if I'm further back than you, if Von is still around, he might find you. Something we will have to find. <laughs> um, For better or worse. Like, I, I mean, Von's not going to, like... You, uh, Tonk is sending... Sending. At the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm able to. Mm-hmm. Because we have no... And then it's... We have nothing relative. We don't know that they just didn't are somewhere else in the world at that moment, right? Like, we have That's no right, idea. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Oh. Yep. So there's, there's a so couple that... of things, right? So Kira is an elf. She lives for a long time. Long time. Havoc is not an elf. No, but not. Von is. So but if Von, Von is. managed to change... So if Von managed to get his body back and switch himself back... So there's something that, that needs to be worked out there as well. Because if you might speak to Havoc, but Havoc's dead, but Von isn't. Because so if it's been that... years, Havoc... Oh, shit. Havoc could... we... Von might be around, Havoc might not be. Mm -hmm. Something that we can work out. Also, a couple of things. Does anyone know what a group of ours is called? Boot. A parliament. <laughs> a parliament. Wait, oh. what the hell? <laughs> Did we just... Okay, 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 okay. Did we just like happen upon talking about that the other day? 
Wasn't that no, a group I, I of crows? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I was just like, no, we no, were like about penguins. Yeah, you were. Uh, I don't know. Was that a group I don't, of I don't, penguins? Something, I don't and then we were like, that. no, we were like playing Minecraft, Minecraft or something. Yeah, and and the, and we yeah, it was somehow a stumbled upon a group of owls called. Mm. Does anyone know what the Latin name for an owl is? What Strixnor? No, Strix. Hmm. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Strix in mythology is a bird of ill omen. Does anyone anyone got other any tidbits they want to share about characters? Far oh, out, like... what an ending! That was good. It... Not even an ending. Not, no, I it's mean it's just... not like an if, but a when we pick this up, I guess at some point. Yeah, but like, what can we? Uh, I guess. Even if we talk about stuff now, that might not even happen. I mean, it's anything in the past, I guess. Like something that you guys might be interested in is is what happening with what happened with um, uh, Iron. No, I, 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 I know. Well, I, I know. know. Yeah, I was oh. going to ask about Iano. What what was what was that? What was the deal with Iano? Was he was sorry? Was he the rat, or was the rat was his familiar? The, the rat, rat was, was his familiar. Familiar, yeah, okay. He was killed by that Strixnor. That means he was close. He was killed by Strixnor. Could we have found that out somehow? Mm hmm. You were going to find How? that out. You were going to find that out in when you went back to Neverwinter. But you never. Um, you needed to go and speak to. Uh, it was one of the locations that you guys never ended up going to. I need to get the um, map up. But yeah, basically there was a location that I said a couple of times, which you guys never actually went to. Um, and if you had gone Trust there, <laughs> you would have uh, found the out. basement. You hear something um, from the basement. I think we should go upstairs. What if this place has an attic? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't have the map anymore. But yeah, basically there was a location near uh, the library, whatever the library was called. Um, House of Knowledge, I think it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Basically, there was a location near that where it was Ayano's study or his um, like place of work, basically. Um, and if you had gone there, you would have found out some information about him and more, so and would have led he... you down uh, that route. So did he die like post us looking into it or... So like, that his, familiar was alive when we saw the familiar was he alive? He was still he's still alive there. He was making yeah. his way back to Neverwinter when you found the rat. Uh, right. Basically, he would he was already escaping uh, when you guys were still fighting the bugbears in the room on the far side. There were four bugbears yeah. and a goblin, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, he okay. heard that fighting yeah. and was already leaving. Basically. Right. And um, so he, it's because you put. Or? Sorry? How did he die to Strixnor then? He was sacrificed to Strixnor. Sacrificed to Strixnor? <clears throat> yep. By parliament, by, parliament members, probably? By the parliament. <laughs> by a parliament member. Which is the, ha the hags. No, it wasn't mm -hmm. the hags. We don't know members. who the parliament members are. Uh, you, you know a couple of them, but you don't know all like a, a lot of them. Mm. There are a couple of characters that I never got to reveal because like, mm. it was just like, just like characters, decision stuff. Um, but the hags, their coven were like one of his main sort of higher ranking oh, the, was parliament it the core members. Tower? Core was that tower. where he was? The core tower? In Neverwinter? Where Iona worked? That does sound familiar. Yeah. I've got it written down. I've got House of Knowledge close to the public and the core tower. As well I'm not, as. I'm not sure if it was called General the core tower. Shell, or... Smitten Smitty's, Driftwood Tavern, Iron Flagging Inn. Maybe small, it was the core small tower. Purple store, the third wish. Oh no, that was Ginny. That was Grinny. Sorry. The oh, Grinny. Ayala, you needed <laughs> to do, do follow uh, Grinny up. I wrote a full backstory for that shiz. Um, I mean, I, I, I tried a couple times with sending with the sending stone, but it. She got them. Yeah. She got them. Yeah. She couldn't respond. Yeah. What, what happened? I can't reveal that because technically you guys are in the same timeline and 
something's happening there. Yeah. So yeah. I can't. That unfortunately, I am not able to reveal. Um, um, that was kind of the but, only thing I was curious about with Ayla, like that I wouldn't know is 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 circling back to Neverwinter and all of that, right? Like, did they did the Hag escape? Like, that's what she was really worried about is that they weren't able to to put um, the original Hag. What was her name? I can, I can never remember it. Duh, it starts Drenna? with D. Drenna. Drenna? Yeah. Drenna. Uh, she was meant to be executed, and then also, you know, circling back with Grinny. So. Um, I guess... Yeah, I'll reveal it. I don't mind. Someone was ex executed. Ooh. Whether someone. that was Drinner is another question. So someone was... Okay. Was it, it was probably Isa, Issa Wiseman, wasn't it? What, you fucking no, no, take the form no, no, of someone still else? There. She's, she, no, no. Okay. Hmm. More like someone took her place. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But yeah, there was a there was a full backstory there that I really wanted you to follow up with um with Grinny. Because yeah. uh, she had a yeah, I was very proud of her backstory in life. We just had to make I will, had to have made it back to Neverwinter for that though, which we're there now, so uh, you certainly are. Um but yeah, there was there was that sort of stuff. Um what else do I have here? Um why keep Derek alive when everyone else is sacrificed? That was my. That was like the first question I had in my head. Oh, there was so um, much to do with the ten towns as well that you guys never got to explore. Yeah, it was like a majority of that was from the Icewind Dale books, but it was like uh, that dragon that you fought, the charred. Chardolin oh, the... metal dragon. Yeah, that yeah, thing yeah. was actually meant to be um, sort of flying around the ten towns, destroying them, like oh, damn. Uh, blasting them away. Um, okay. But uh, he was the the dragon was called back to protect the um, the portal. Is Elric guys, ever make a, released? A for it. Um. Is Dale going to do another like person swap when you know? <laughs> Professor Von goes evil and Elric is released. Uh, I mean, it? that's not up to me, I guess. He's not my character. Yeah, it's kind of up to you if, whether or not he gets out, because if he gets out, he might rejoin. But um, that would be after amount of time that he's kind of helped his family name, I guess, be secured a bit more. Mm. Um, but I, I think we had spoken about the idea that he would have been... Mm -hmm. He probably did get exonerated and, like... um like ended up like getting like getting the other oh uh, what was it like the other le town leader in, um in trouble the captain or court. Mm -hmm. yeah. the captain so the, the captain I, the plan i, mean, I, I had, for had El yeah the plan i had for elric was he was going to be exonerated he was going to be freed um and he was going to take ownership back of the ikathar estate and uh no no Earth, I think it was. No. Yeah, Kerf. Communications. No, Law and Keep. No, sorry, Rethnor. Rethnor. Rethnor was the uh, what was one of the captains uh, of Las Khan, and he was the one that uh, uh, basically was working with Elric's brother um, to the slave trade and stuff like that. Um, so they end up. Uh, Eric ends up able to prove his innocence and uh, have Rethnor taken down with the help of Tyrell, who's the High Captain of Lost Khan. So yeah, definitely, like he'd be, he would be resetting his family name and trying to trying to build that, and probably attempting to cover up, well, not necessarily cover up, but like keep guns to a minimum because I think he, I don't think he wants them like being a big point of trade because that's kind of his uh what his father didn't want he didn't want it he didn't want to become a weapons as much as he, I, uh, was, he was a smith he didn't want to be a, a black market dealer yeah i have a but, um we'll see. i'm willing to uh reveal a parliament member if you would like 
please. Oh, please, uh, please. Someone you had an interaction with. Of course. God. And it's someone that... Not one of the brothers. One of you uh, pegged, but couldn't quite work out why. Oh, me. Damn it. You know uh, who? I the captain, was. Dory. Oh, Dory of was course. Huh? The captain, the captain. The, the ship captain that took you to the Smuggler's no Island. <laughs> so he was a member of the parliament, so he was keeping watch on, watch on you. Uh, so uh, gotta, whether you'll I'm be getting your uh, uh, money back is, is a question. See you, mate. Um, it, yeah, um, <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was an excellent wrap-up, and you, I now want to know what happens in time. That's whack. All right, yeah. peace out. In time. See you, dude. Have a good one. See you, um, I was just looking through the my list of like inventory in the bag of holding, and there is the jade totem of an owl written down. So you mm. found that in the bag of holding that was originally in the Neverwinter Castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was no. Uh... I don't want to be that guy, but we left that with. No, I know. No, I don't have it anymore. It's just oh, yeah, I've, yeah, written, yeah, I've, I've got yeah, it. I've got yeah. it. We left it with Bavana. Bavana, yeah, but yeah. Bavana, yeah. But we had that. Like yes, that was one correct. of those things that was like, oh, it's another other dot to like. It's yeah. another owl thing. That's a wondrous item. You could, like the bear figurine. Oh, you guys never identified it. Mm -mm. We didn't have anything to identify at the no time. One, yeah, because we didn't meet Have havoc it. until after it was too late. So that that was a wondrous item like Joel's uh, or, or Kira's giant thing. bear. Is it like, uh, create, like a giant owl? An owl bear? It makes, owl bear? No, it makes a... Uh, Summon Strixnor. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, it makes Strixnor, but as a smaller version. You would have you were going to have to fight a mini version of Strixnor if you summoned that. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, so if we found out it was a wondrous item, tried to summon it, it, fighting Strixnor, <laughs> it would turn against us. We'd have to. It was going to turn against you, hundred percent. Oh my goodness! <laughs> have no to good. fight so I'm, try, I'm trying to. Away. I'm trying to think of a word. It's like a, like I want to uh, say facsimile sort of thing, like an effigy almost. Mm, like it's yeah, a, right. it's yeah. like a weakened, smaller version of what he was. It's um, avatar. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, kind of like an avatar of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if uh, you guys used that or identified it, you would have found out that's what it was. So the bear would have stayed around Kira and it would have dropped back down to the figure at some point and she would have picked it up. So she's still got yeah. that. Yep. Um, Keeping that bitch. No yeah, Dory was part of the parliament. Uh, Who's the, the, the captain of the airship where we fought the blue dragon thing? Yeah, that was the, the water ship. Yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that, was, Dory. Yeah, that was Dory. And he was really like... I he was a water on, genasi. I he was up on him that he skittish, was weird. right? Yeah, he was yeah, being he was like weird. He was kind of afraid and stuff. Like he was being weird. Yeah. Like... What was some of the messages that I had from you, Ben, about <laughs> him? He was. Um... Yeah. While well, you look back through that, um, a while, something that you didn't do enough, I think, Tonk was commune. You didn't commune enough. I didn't have an option to do. Like I, where, no? what, at what level? Do you I communed commune? once, and I I've got your question. I don't think I have the spells to commune. I don't think I get that until, like, just now. I thought it was a... Uh... Oh, maybe... Oh, yeah, it was that potion. It was, that it was, a, po potion. It was a potion commune. I wasn't able to do that anymore. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, divine yeah, Intervention <laughs> is something you could have done, though, right? No, Divine Intervention is level 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. So one of your questions for commune... Commune is a, commune's a fifth level spell, and... But it is a... It is a ritual cast, so if I have mm -hmm. it, I don't have to use a spell slot for it. But I've only just got fifth level spells with level nine, so I haven't mm -hmm. had it until obviously now. Yeah. So your questions with the, that you got that you asked from. Well, you wrote them that down. Potion. Yeah, I wrote them down. That's all. Awesome. Uh, the first one was: uh, Are the answers we seek in regards to the spider uh, trail we've been chasing in Icewind Dale? And I said yes. Because it was. Ayano was connected to Strixnor, who had who his portal to the Tinian House was in Icewind Dale. And then your second one was uh, do the recent events surrounding the son of Gaz, 
uh, like as in Gazgul, mm-hmm. um, and Icewind Dale have anything to do with each other? And I said no, because Icewind Dale doesn't have anything to do with. Well, and at Trixner. that time, I didn't know that Icewind Dale was like separate yeah. to the yeah and yeah. And Rick then your Dale. last question was, "Is Elric okay?" And I said yes, because yeah. he was going to be okay. Yeah, well, I just I was concerned about my friend in the moment. <laughs> You guys also stayed at the Sator's Demise, which was a little homage. To yeah, Amos. we, we yeah, talked about yeah. that. Yeah. And I'm not sure if Soma. you were... Soma. Yeah, Soma, Soma is Amos, Amos backwards. backwards. I liked it a lot, actually. I really yeah. did. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I have something that I was really curious about. So you went into a lot of detail describing like some specifics about the Smuggler's Island. What was the deal with the island itself? Was it... Because like you kind of described that like sometimes it was there, sometimes it wasn't. Like if I remember right, I kind of got the idea that like it moved or was sentient of some kind. Whether or not that be, I don't know. I think the Smuggler's Island was a way to introduce you to Dory and to see if you can root him out as a Parliament member. Mm-hmm. The actual island I had as a old rock nest, uh, as in like the, the giant flying bird. The, the bird yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that thing, like, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to have it come down and sort of be in the in the battle or not because a rock is like crazy fucking strong. Um, so I did. I don't know about that, but um, yeah, there wasn't actually anything like particular around the mm. island or anything like that it was more just a way of you a way for you guys to interact with dory to see if you can root him out as a parliament member um were to there, give you more information were the rest of the members of the ship aware of that aware of him being a part no, of the parliament no, okay. not a single one even his first mate yeah um so you're receiving what, only dory was the parliament member or all of them only were no only dory only was the parliament yeah. member yeah, yeah. What instructions was he receiving? So he was told to keep an eye on you. Um, can I? Yeah, was it fear that I was feeling on Dory's part? Maybe partially, but there's something else that you can't quite put your finger on. <laughs> yeah, so with Dory, it was. He was kind of being forced to sort of. Do what, yeah, yeah, like do what well, we he was doing. So, um, so the way that that had to have worked was we sought him out. So someone had to have found out that we were going to be traveling with him and then well, like if, strong-armed him into making... Well, if you remember at the docks, they were the only travel boats. Of, mm-hmm. or he was the only sort of captain available. Yeah. Um, Fucking kill the rest of them. <laughs> who was it that set them made up? Sure that who was it that I mean, something boat? happened that made him the only sort of available. Yeah, option. that's right. Yeah. Um, who was it that went and looked for the boat? Who who booked Havoc. it? Havoc was it? Was yeah, Havoc, I think it was, was Havoc. It? Yeah. Um, what were you just saying, Joel? You are. You just said something, and I was trying to work out if I can say it or not. What instructions was he getting? Oh, about? Uh, yeah. He, he was being told to kind of watch you. Because, I suppose, it, it was because it was you, Kira, and your relationship with Derek, mm. who Strixnor had. Um, that was the reason. There was no kind of reason for him to look at Hong Kong oh, Ayala, anything. Yeah. I mean, you guys had already, I suppose, taken or, or fought Drinner, the hag in Neverwinter. So you were definitely on Strixnor's radar, uh, but yeah, you were the main reason he was sort of keeping a watch on you. Was that the only kind of instance that was? No, he was sort of watching. He, he's a pretty high level caster, so he was able to like kind of watch what was happening. Um, Ayla, you you've got some stuff to work out with the Zentarum. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if. This guy followed if Dory actually followed through with what we asked him to do. So there's, yeah, so I mean, we, I still would have I stuff mean, to work out, but yeah, yeah, it's just because I mean, 
technically, the Zentarum don't have anything to do with Strixnor. Yeah, yeah. It's... So it's it's whether, I suppose, I would think that Dory would kind of do what you requested in taking the... <clears throat> The so Warhammer, Warhammer back to Lilio. War, the Warhammer, yeah, to Lilio to prove that we had uh, kind of taken out the main guy at the smugglers area. Yeah. The thing is, I don't um, know, and I don't know if if it's like appropriate, but like where Ayala is, um, I don't know what she would follow up on. Um, this has obviously been really traumatic. Like, um. She has the feeling of loss a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that is self-inflicted. Like, she feels that um, looking back in retrospect, having been through what we've been through, that maybe leaving her family was just a bad call, right? Like, obviously, like, she thought that it was what was best, but she still ultimately put them in danger. So, mm -hmm. um... She has a little bit of an abandonment issues with what happened with Kira. She has some of that with Tonk as well. Um, not that she's petty to the point where, like, obviously things are bigger than her, but she feels very much so that, like, maybe Tonk like, and, and Ayla have grown a little bit apart. And mm -hmm. that, like, that's her doing. Like, she feels she's outgrown Tonk, essentially. Yeah. Right, like that, their beliefs don't quite align. Um, that she needs to kind of find her own way. So she's feeling very like what she was looking for in the group, she didn't really get. And that's no fault of any of buddy, right? Like that. That's just how I ended up playing Aola. So like she was looking for a place somewhere to belong. So like maybe she does seek out the Zentarum. And kind of find out a little more about what they've got going on. But she wants to go home. She yeah. She just really wants to go be with her mom and dad. And um, I think she knows. Well, when she asked the mirror about her parents, the, the mirror was like, yeah, they're fine. So she wants to go home. Um, Which is the truth. They are yeah. fine. Okay, good. So um, Even though Strixnall Strix was trying to like say otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, obviously, there's a little bit of loose ends that Ayala would want to stick around with Tonk to help make sure that he's okay. I don't know. Once she figures out that, if we figure out that this is Derek, because obviously us, the players, we might know that, but I don't We. I don't know that he remembers his name. Like, how long has he been in torture? Like, who knows, right? If well, he remembers. That's what I was about to bring up. What's up? So... Yeah, she may like, not be interested in adventuring anymore, Ayala, just because what she was looking for at the beginning compared to what she found has changed, kind of just changed her, right? So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if um, <clears throat> Ben's put a spin on it, but like originally. Kira shared that, um, like her city where she was like raised was mm -hmm. um, occasionally uh, ambushed, raided by fiends that came out of portals, mm. <coughs> and <clears throat> didn't know if, whether Derek was killed or taken or whatever. But that was I don't know if I said sixty or eighty years ago, it was at least sixty. Um, now we've kind of come across this time portal of not that that was. Strict snore because we think it's now this kind of other double colored eye wizard guy, or whatever. Um, but yeah, like in my head, I'm like, has you know, has Strict snore been at it for has this been going on for like 60 years, or did the fiends are they not even like related to Strict snore? But like Derek was taken and Derek made his way eventually to be taken by Strict snore or some kind of whatever, and like, what's that kind of higher purpose because mm -hmm. that's quite a while but it could be a time thing who knows but yeah yeah open i mean a lot of questions 
yeah, a, a lot of those, to be honest, I can't answer. Um, no, yeah, but... no, I wouldn't have thought so. I'd imagine maybe some of them you maybe have I will, I will definitely there. say that there's something bigger <laughs> at works there. Um, it, it is not by coincidence. You didn't just um, write yeah. it in just to, you know. But you know what I've just found? The, the rules I wrote for uh, the hag fight for you three. <laughs> So I'll I'll read this word for word. The super hag pulls the the three of them into the dream and makes them live out past events, but with certain changes or events that will affect the players later down the track. She is able to transfer transform her dreamscape into the scenario and then control it in the way she seems fit. The players need to stop the whatever event of happening. Tonk. Tonk, your mother runs into your arms, whispers out of breath and, uh, and blood rubbing from her head, save me. Ayala, halt. By order of the town general, mm -hmm. Amma and Abba Furbog, you are to be tried and judged for the crime of fostering a tiefling, a banished race. Kira, Evos lays there dying with his wounds, unable to be healed, says to you, why couldn't you save me? Rules. The hag doesn't interrupt uh, until the final stage where she can fight them. She ends the dreamscape before the death of her victims. Healing magic doesn't work, um, which I don't think I ended up doing. Uh, you regain all hit points and spell slots at the end of each sequence. Uh, each failed sequence is a 10, plus 10 buff to their madness meter at the start of the turn. Oh, okay. That's cool. I really like that fight. That was a cool fight. I did like that one. I would have liked to um, explore the like punks, um, like pre Ayla and mm -hmm. post Ayla, um, living in the, that village. Um, Stone stand. Because there's some there's some stuff that I didn't tell you, Crub. Mm. That, um, I don't know, like what we had spoken about previously. Um, around this, the circumstances of us leaving Stone Stand. Um, but essentially, I fed it to you in a lie because you mm -hmm. were being... Uh, there was a plot to kill you in, oh. the, in Stone Stand. And myself and Daphne and two oh, of... Shit the local brothers who were friends of ours uh, helped, basically helped us escape and get out of the town before. But I didn't want, I didn't want to, I didn't want to disclose that to you. Yeah, yeah. So it's like something that <laughs> I've been sitting on like the whole, whole campaign. That's like, crazy, like, when yeah. Do I, when do I try and, like, when do I bring this up? How do I, how do I bring this up? It was just something that I couldn't, I couldn't think of how. That's cool. I mean, because, like, I mean, from Ale's perspective is we were just going to Neverwinter to help, right? Like, help the orphanage. Yeah. You know, we were going, yeah. That was our thing, was to yeah, go and help been, the orphanage. It would have been interesting if Ben wrote it in or kept, like, creating circumstances where Ale could have found out and then confront you and then you have to explain why you and that's so much worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would yep. have been a good idea. Oh man! Yeah, because she'd have been, but I, she'd have been pissed for sure. Like Ayala, whole, yeah, she's, she can be kind of quite vulnerable, so it would mm, be interesting to see. The whole campaign I was there was moments I wanted to like bring up Daphne, and then I think I mentioned her. Once. You did because um, I because I said something. I brought her up. Ayla did right, like about yeah. And you you were like yeah you were, you kind of described Tonk as being like put off by it, and I was like, what? Huh? Yeah. So. Um, I don't know how much Ayala would have known about your relationship with her, but um, it obviously was significant. So yeah, but. yeah, it was. Yeah, and that was that was what I was going to ask in the mirror. Mm, didn't you didn't get to. Oh, I was so I sad about that. I was I so sad. Yeah, that was pretty funny because <laughs> Dave was going clearly questions. under the impression, impression that you got seven questions each, and nah, I, I said nothing like that. It was seven <laughs> questions in total. Oh man. So a few I things at the end that I'll share because I, th I think they, w they would have come up if we um, 
rest it outside. Uh, I'll lengthen this out a little bit more. I think yeah, if maybe yeah. we were able to do this originally at the time and Dale was more... Um, was I would be a bit more attentive, like not being out, so we could actually like whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was kind of I was expecting maybe some time that some questions came up. I tried to with the roles I've been doing and um, me kind of gesturing to insinuating like the kind of uh, when Tonk said, "Oh, there's someone in his brain, in his head, whatever," they're referring to like Von um, and hero kind of winced or whatever and she wasn't really able to short rest um and when she was originally revivified and she was kind of like screaming so that was kind of that's when she was kind of experiencing her mind like fragmenting essentially um and then uh, ben was kind of uh saying that you know some things seem familiar some things don't things feel like they've been lost um so kira wasn't able to short rest she was restless because um she i think she was just trying to kind of figure out what had happened and there was a couple of roles with where she's being kind of pulled to um and she winced when when tonk said that you know that there's he's like bonds in there's another person in his head, whatever, because Kira, since being brought back, has just been having constant flashes of Strixnor. Uh, and this then and, and now Kira being alone and potentially in the past having to live out some kind of time, whatever, there's gonna be maybe over time an influence on her mind. Yeah. It might have to be rolled with. And I I spoke to Ben and I, I wanted to roll on it because with Azoth. Not that it was decided very early on in the campaign, but kind of once I'd spoken to Dale about it and we'd kind of written some stuff into it, like it was just, okay, this is just what Azoth is doing. And, and I I regret, I think maybe I rolled once and it was when Amos tried to um, convince you. Mine mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. image, whatever, the, the, yeah, yeah, the whole like playing yeah. out, whatever. I was like, that's so, I wanted to respect the kind of, the effort that he um, yeah. attempt from yeah. Another yeah, that, yeah yeah not to just be like do i want to do that do i don't if i if i could go back i would have rolled a lot more especially mm -hmm. early on and then once it was kind of solidified i'd probably roll less and less yeah, 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 yeah. um but i wanted to start yeah you wouldn't want to roll contradictory on. rolls and like per pers i guess persistently try to update because that's, that's that's a that's a road that you end up looking indecisive right like unless that's what you want your character to be but like yeah. there are I, I get what you're saying like there should be i think it would be like a almost like a sliding scale at like some points like there would like not more be a, a role pull. required whereas like yeah depending yeah. on how these roles are going if they're genuinely going 50 50 each time then it's just a genuine struggle between the two sides but if there are consistent fails on like those but roles and it starts to get worse and worse. At some point, it's basically going... It's like the DC right, gets higher and higher. And yeah, yeah sort of but you thing. also yeah. have to remember, too, that, like, you're playing a person, right? Like, so what yeah. do we do when we're indecisive? A lot of times we don't do anything, right? So, like, if those roles are 50-50 flopping back and forth, that just represents the internal struggle you have. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean you fully mm -hmm. embrace one side or the other as those no, roles roll out, right? so yeah it wouldn't be one of those things where it's like i mean so i think that's a really uh, like good example is uh would does kira step into the portal or not that is like yeah, a, yeah. a genuine 50 50 as to like what it would be like one side is the other but in terms of like um does uh kira accept strixnor as her, her like her holy figure and god of power patron yeah, to a no, 50 yeah. 50 role like no that doesn't make yeah, any sort of yeah, sense like yeah. it would have to be something that is slowly built up over mm. time and it's not even if if you were sort of teetering back and forth like consistently passing failing uh like it would that that would never sort of come to that sort of question it would have to be a series of events or something to happen or it would it, there would have to be something leading up to that Mm -hmm. um and further to the revivify stuff i said was talking to joel about this but uh this was partly your fault jamie um 
this would have been Jamie's uh, or Tonk's first revivify. So whether he actually did it correctly is something that uh, we weren't sure about. And also the location of where you did the revivify. You did it in the Chamber of Sacrifices. There was no way that soul was coming back 100%. Very good point. The power of Sorry. the room. I think that makes the power of the room makes more sense than him not necessarily knowing how to do it right. Like, if the, well, if it, the it was, spell required a role, about power, right? then it's maybe, more about but... Tonk's connection with Ruby Sorcerers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which you did that, so Bader. Being how could you? There was also way more for that you to to look at there. Um, oh, but of just, course. Just, just didn't really yeah. play out. Yeah. But yeah, that was um that was really interesting. Another one down, okay. fellas. Yeah. To be continued. <sighs> yeah, that's cool. So do we just like get to the point where each one of us is DMing a campaign and when yeah. it gets to the to be continued, just <laughs> the next person's like, oh, I've written some more stuff on these characters with <laughs> two years well, ago. Remember that campaign? Well, now it's going to wibbly wobbly timey wimey for me because I don't know how to <laughs> sort of... That's do, yeah. do some of it. Do oh, you like, start the campaign with like Dale first for a couple of weeks, and then with me, and then everyone's in Dale. Dale. That would be cool. That'd be very cool, actually. Um, I want to know if how far back they are, and whether they see us like running through the city, like before we go to Lost Card. If there's like, I mean, there's heaps in the stuff, past. Like, like they're in the past. Is it the same past, or is it like an alternate dimension? God, I'm not timeline. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, multiverse. I, I, Are we I don't. Like, we're Marvel multiverse. This. Shit? I don't <laughs> think it's going to be a different like plane of existence sort of we're thing. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty Lindell? sure. It's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just going to be back in time. <laughs> that was. That was that was <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Dang. obviously, you you two are easy, but yeah, with Kira's stuff, I mean. Um, without revealing how far she went back, there's definitely stuff that maybe she wants to go do, especially with Von as well. Like he's probably got stuff he wants to go do. So yeah, is that's an interesting <gasps> thought process. It's like if Wait. you went back far enough, can you can you correct save that Yeah, it, it there's like a bunch of stuff that you go back and it changes like <laughs> based on how kind of. <laughs> It, it reacts to sort of when we get back up to the the. And are you like? Do I remember? Do I remember? By the time you go and take on Evos and just wipe them all out like like this. You're the bugbear. Do bear. I remember about Tonks' past? Do I go back and and help him save his mother or like just try to? <laughs> do you remember? I mean, there's a bunch of stuff like. Yeah, but you're, what is so, you're a bit corrupted move, though, right? So would you? That. I yeah, I'm not fully functional, so. Mm. Yeah, and that, I was going to say that that's the I other mean, thing. Like with Azoth, it was like he didn't know what to do because he was lost. So he was like just trying to find: does this more align with me? Does that? But with Kira, it's she's fighting it. Like she knows, she still knows what's right, kind of a thing. She's uh -huh. so the roles are more like um, against the influence and, and less about just which direction mm -hmm. do I feel like I want to go. So, so something I'll, I'll leave with you, Joel. <clears throat> Strixnor is alive. Oh, we're in the past! Timeline. Oh. Bitch. But of I'm influenced, course. but I'm like being and influenced, influenced by, him. by him. But like, by it's a different a loop. him. It's a loop! That's. That's what wanna... started him off by getting kidnapped. It's a mm -hmm. loop! You facilitated getting Derek kidnapped because of... If you were, like... I, I wouldn't be smart enough to do this, but if you were smart <laughs> enough to, like, think of... I don't, I don't know, like, the loopholes of time and, like, you know, if this I've, happens... I've, and then... I've thought about it. I'll, I'll say yeah. that. I've thought yeah. About it. Yeah. That, like... Because you don't want to, like... Bro, I'm would... sick, twisted. I, I, I can't help myself think about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to, like, the, the cop out of this, like... And you will wake up and it was just a dream. Yeah, oh, yeah. Do, you like... know how, do you know how tempted I was <laughs> to do it? Punk wakes up in his bed in in Stonevale or whatever it is. Kira's eye like wakes up in so and so and such a cop. Mithrina. 
It was all a dream. <laughs> Tonk wakes up in bed with Drina next to him. Oh God. But to go back in time and then like it's your wife. Tonk would <laughs> suffer the fate of like not being able to change things, or if you do change things, other bad things happen. Yeah. Like, yeah. So many. Because like I think that's and... that's there's really interesting like like obviously so you would be tempted to end. Surely there'll be like a god intervene. of time as well, like a, like a god yeah. like a god of time, but. No, god it'd be fate. more the more the god of uh, yeah, I don't know. If I could call so it god that. of fate um, or it's, law. It, it's it's now more the question actually: Do I just get you guys to play new characters at the present time, uh, and then you guys get yeah. to play sort of the adjusted universe from decisions Havoc Kira has made in the past to change things? Because um, like obviously then that depends on different things so does kira go back and save stuff that affects what strixnor does does uh havoc do something that affects possibly the orc gate wars does that change kind of what the result is around neverwinter like does i don't know kira go do something about elric's past uh and sort of what's happening with the ikathar estate that changes what hap happens around lost Carmen. Do you just hmm. Kira go back and change what's happening with Fandelver and what happened in around there and like kind of the Harbin, not Harbin, the um, what are the three dwarfs called again? I can't remember. The um, the Rock Seeker Brothers, Rock Seeker Sleepy, Brothers. Sneezy. So maybe that oh. changes as well. Like, so there's a bunch of stuff that changes, Dopey. and I'm sure Havoc can change, like, uh, or Von can change a bunch of world stuff. So, Dopey motherfucker. It, it could go either direction, but I, yeah. yeah, it's just whether I suppose you guys want to pick up playing those characters again mm -hmm. uh, and follow out their stories a little bit more, which is obviously up Dopey. to you guys. Dopey was the main, the main Rock Seeker. My need to control things wants to do that like wants to like play That's it out hilarious. right yeah but also i think it's more interesting to let the new story help make the connections right because like it gives you the dm a lot of freedom to kind of like sew things together it would feel a lot less forced if if we didn't necessarily it makes things way know easier as for me players to yeah it, right? yeah mm -hmm. How corrupt happened? was the fat controller? The what? The fat guy. Harbin. Um, Harbin. Oh, so corrupt. So corrupt. He was getting Can't paid off by the, the, red red, the red brand um, yeah. bandits yeah. all left, right, and center. Yeah. He was super fucked up. I... Fandel was actually in a really good place now, now that um, uh, Sildar's taken over. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. I loved making those uh, werewolf, werewolf stuff. No, no, oh, it was, that was so much fun. An another thing that I think Ayala would do is um, try to push her belief into something that is not her or her friends, right? So, like, one interaction that she had that she really enjoyed was the priestess of the god of luck. And uh, she might seek that Anora? out. Yeah. She might seek that out and, like, foster those those connections a little Eyes bit a little too more. yeah nice mm -hmm. i like it wow but yeah that was fun i'm re glad it's wrapped up and done yeah gives me but time to be a character again yeah i'm excited for you to be a character again and i'm excited I'm excited to flex my role playing muscles because I feel like as a DM, you're very concerned about story and mm. rules and yeah. all that sort of stuff. It's hard to sort of get into the role playing side of things, whereas like yeah. as a character, it's it's. It, I think I, I've I've learned a lot from this 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 campaign. I I learned what I don't want to be and what I don't want to do. So like I I, I can't think I told you this, Ben. I really don't think I did. I'm really sad for Ayala because I I didn't do her justice. You, you yeah. killed her. Yeah, and I I think it's realistic. I think it makes sense for her. Um, she's very young still, so like she's got her life to kind of get it together. But like I think that's okay. Like I think that it's it's cool to feel like you've ended a, a, an arc of your life and it not necessarily work out how you needed it to, like what you were looking for, and whether or not she has the introspect to figure out what that means for her moving forward or how long it takes her to, to do that. Right. Like she mm. was desperate 
for attention and for a family replacement because she feels really guilty about having run away from hers, right? The people that took her in when they shouldn't have. Um, yeah. And she thought she was protecting them, so she ran away and then didn't find what she wanted out of this group. doesn't mean that she cares any less about you guys. It's just didn't meet her expectations. And so she's come to terms with, this isn't going to be how I need it to be. So, That's so real, though. Yeah, yeah. And, so real, and I love that. But I yeah. also totally well, get the end of the Theros awesome. campaign in a way. Of, a little bit, yeah. Different ways of for, for but different, I, uh, different characters. It's something you you mentioning getting better at role playing. It's it. There's uh, several things that key things that I was like, man, I I just got to be better with that. Like one thing I feel like I don't do that well is just playing in the moment. Like I've got all these like thought arc lines going through my head about like how like and and like i want to be better at being literally right there to not try to have feel like i have to figure out where this story is going does that make sense yeah it, yeah, yeah i do get play, it's kind of like crab hovering above sort of like yeah. playing al rather than actually playing al and kind yeah. of being in the moment. it's like a video game mindset a little bit right like mm -hmm. as you're that's what you, I was thinking. You're worried a bit can, about the story arc and not we necessarily We can have conversations as characters that have nothing to do with moving forward yeah. or even talking about yeah. what we're even doing. Like we're literally just having a chat. And I think it happened oh, maybe a handful of times at most mm -hmm. during Theros and I think maybe even less during this campaign for Kira. But I, I like out of all the things that have happened in both campaigns, some of the things that have stuck with me the, stuck with me the most are like the... And I think I messaged Jamie and Dale once after, um, after like a session, just being like, "I just feel so much closer to you as a character and a human being right now." Mm -hmm. Like after a comment, like just just a I real conversation. That. Yeah, I yeah. I just just that. just a real conversation, and I, I was like, oh, "Fuck!" Like I, yeah. And they were yeah. they were so few and far between, but yeah, those moments. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's a fine line for a DM to kind of keep the balance between being story driven and allowing characters to sort of explore and sort of just role play their characters. Um, because if you obviously don't give them any sort of storyline to work on, they kind of just don't do anything. They just go, I suppose, looking for combats and stuff like that, which which is a bit kind of difficult. Obviously, there's times for that but then if you i which is i think what i came which i was doing too much this campaign it was too much story um and it was very sort of point a point b point c point d like it just kind of it was just kind of plodding along sort of yeah thing, and i think that's what if i had any constructive criticism for us all it's just to slow down right like yeah i agree i think that the story will always spur a sense of urgency but I also yeah. don't want to skip over something that you find valuable as DM. So like mm. I, it, it pings in my mind all the time for things because it's just, I'm curious. Like when you describe something in detail, I, me, the player, I want to figure that out. But like in that moment, I'm also like, well, I need to weigh, is that important compared to this, what's going on in the story? But like, I think it's okay to say, oh yeah, well the world is, is, is could be ending, but it's more interesting to also explore the world that you created, right? Like, because I think we miss a lot of things, right? It, it, it's so much more interesting yeah. if we can pick up little tidbits along the way instead of literally following this dotted line through the story. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you probably miss as much as you think you do. A lot of that descriptive stuff is me just sort of mm. trying to provide you guys with as much kind of visual imagination as possible. Um, and that's just, I suppose, how I... I mean, envisioning it in my head well, and, and just kind of putting it towards yeah. you. Probably, there's probably actually not too much. I mean, there probably is. And then the stuff that then it doesn't get caught. And that's when I'm like, ah, damn, I probably needed to make it a little bit clearer that, yeah, like this was a point of interest and not just yeah, sort I, of like fluff. I just don't think it's important. I don't think it's as important for us as players to push a narrative than it is for you. I guess that's my point. Yeah. We should, yeah, I agree. we should let the take DM control the time the narrative and then, yeah, take the time and explore and, and, and I also pay attention to what we're in a bit of a, that moment. 
Yeah. We were in a bit of a tough situation with scheduling. Like, little bit. obviously doing, More... doing two weeks off, two weeks off is hard to Just sort tough. of not push a story when you get the chance. If you're, yeah. like, as a DM, DM, if you're only getting two weeks to sort of progress a story, it's sort mm-hmm. of hard to go, okay, we're going to spend these two weeks sort of exploring or doing this, and then just sort of like, all right, we're, we're a month now, and I haven't, feel like I haven't progressed yeah. anything. Yeah. But, yeah, well, I and, it, a bit of a and I was I was talking with Dale about that, and it's like our stories so far have been pretty linear stories. A lot of people talk about like D and D being put on a railroad track, and that's not at all what it is, right? Like you didn't force us mm. to do anything, right? A linear story is okay. I think for me, I I like a linear story. I like being able to to explore a narrative that is interesting and fun, right? Like, and it's something that you've put a lot of time into, so therefore it is important to me. However, I also like the idea of having something that is a little more free, but that also takes, like you were saying, like it could be a month and we haven't done anything. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I mean, like I, as, as far as that goes. So, I, but I'm I okay with like, that. So, yeah, I, I think I put out feelers for like ex- exploration and that was around the Orc Gate Wars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I think, like, if you guys decided, like, genuinely decided as players that, yeah, I'm not really going to follow the Strixnor stuff right now. I think we're going to go, like, that. that's what the Zentarum was originally for Ayala. That was a different sort of road that uh, could have you, you guys could have gone down. Same with the Orc Gate stuff. Like, that was something that if you wanted to go investigate, I had done enough background, not a lot, but enough to sort of start that process, and then I would have sort of had to write write out more. But I suppose because... it really gives you an option. You have to <laughs> if we're just like, yeah. yeah, always going towards it. You'll be you'll be pushed to yeah. write more. Like and I guess you, yeah, we you control it and we control it the same. You know yeah, in tandem almost. Yeah, I guess my point is with that is like and and that's a good point, Joel. But like, is that it's okay, right? It's okay mm-hmm. for us not to like just full steam ahead driving towards the end right it's like rushing through a good book right you don't flip to the last chapter and you know like we can take our time through it so i suppose the way we interpret what ben is giving us yeah allows us to like give him the next parts of where to write because like as a dm like if you were just to write a whole story you would literally have to if this is the story every time Mm -hmm. we kind of did this you would have you would have there's a correction of some kind yeah yeah like and sometimes that might be kind of seamless in a way if we're just like oh yeah that's right let's go this way other times you're just like no the door is shut it's locked you can't go there it's it's not actually a door it's a brick wall i definitely did that a couple of times but i tried (laughs) to like play it off as best i could i uh the the main one that comes to mind is at the end of the starter the starter set like the fan delver stuff pushing you to never winter and not really giving you a chance to go and do other stuff. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's kind of like the first time I was like, wow, I really kind of sort of pushed them that way. I didn't really give them an option. Well, um, there's, there's a difference between laying a bait and a good hook and giving us the illusion of choice, right? Mm-hmm. Like the illusion of choice is like one of those things that's like complicated. Like sometimes it's necessary. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you were saying, like you give us the illusion of the choice to go down this other route, but there's a brick wall at the end. Like the the clever thing and the and and the more fun thing is to be like, here's this massive bait and hook. Y'all will find that eventually, right? And you just keep throwing that out there. Um, but it's just a matter of time, right? Like, do we have the time for that? So well, it's kind of like in in <clears throat> Theros when we could have gone and done like different bounties to get yeah. more gold. Mm. I, there was a part of me that was like, I just, I want to do this for a while. I kind of yeah, want to go, I, I, I kind of want to go and, and fucking battle the river but monster, again, even though none of us. Exactly. Battle the river monster, so <laughs> but, a, but again, <laughs> the weight of what was going on was never going to so allow curious. us to do that. And I, I, yeah. I don't necessarily exactly. like Ex- yeah. that. Like I, I like the, I would love the freedom of a campaign that does allow us a little more of that. So, yeah, I mean, Ideally, you'd have something set out, like, you'd have years to sort of slowly build an overarching world 
mm-hmm. with something at the end, but everything like start point, end point, everything in the middle is blank. Like it, it mm. just really lets yeah. the players kind of decide and you have sort points of, of time of play. urgency, but yeah. have them. Well, we don't know. Like... We've what well, we've been playing since what 2020. Is that when we started? Like yeah. So like two campaigns worth of stuff. Those are those by the end of it all. When we start, you know, we finally stop playing. Like those could be many arcs in a big story, right? Oh, 100 percent. So I like, mean, I think we're in the middle really of that cool. now to some degree. <clears throat> like imagine if you guys um, were in Las Khan or something like that, and you heard one of the street merchants saying oh did you hear what happened in Icewind Dale there was a massive dragon that flew across all the 10 towns and blew them all up yeah because you guys didn't go to the 10 towns that event still happened but because you guys weren't there some uh it, it just never it was not something yeah. you guys never experienced like I think that'd be really cool to have like Joel said those specific events still happening but just because you don't follow a route or don't follow a storyline, that doesn't mean the story ends. It just means for sure. that it sort of still happens. The world still and turns, like, right? Like, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Even so, yeah. more campaigns we do and understand that, though, because obviously with the first one being, for I think most of us, the very, very first mm-hmm. introduction to D&D, whatever, like, you're probably just thinking, okay, there's a story, we follow it until the end, and that's it. Yeah, basically, like you don't, yeah. you don't veer off. We can have moments of role play or whatever, but don't get to ADB. Don't waste time doing yeah. that, you know. Yeah, um, but it's it's. I suppose the beauty of this game is that you can have both. With with the yeah. scheduling, it was kind of hard. But if if we were doing, it, say, like hypothetically doing it every week, I wouldn't like. I certainly wouldn't mind having a session here or there where it's just like um, a couple of characters go off and have these kind of deep conversations or yeah. one or two go off and do their own thing for a couple of days and kind of have a split session or yeah but it's i suppose you can't really have unless you just do one campaign for years and years and years you can't really have it all in one yeah but I, and i think that's what i don't want i don't want good, to the good and the bad yeah that, yeah like, and i don't want to have what I, like what i was explaining to be a slight by any means like it's just oh no, and I yeah. love and hate the what ifs after yeah, like it's yeah. it's I, I it's it's what I kind of like like the most sometimes and dislike the most. But even the parts I dislike, it doesn't take away from yeah the game. It's all that like it's at the end of and with the questions and the what ifs and the oh my god we missed that like that's mm-hmm. just like an extra part. Even though yeah. we missed it, we still get to enjoy it, but in a different way of that like oh god we're so stupid like how did we yeah. fucking miss. And if we keep the same schedule as we currently have, I'm not, I think Dale is still going to have some sort of rotation. I'm not sure how that's going to work out for him, but the uh, I think what would be helpful for me to stay a little bit more engaged because it does. I do lose a little bit of attention having two weeks off. It's like I don't know if we can have, you know, even just a really short mini wrap up between sessions. I think that would be fun too. I don't know if there's any interest in something like that, but like just discussing things with the current campaign could be fun. So mm. it's hard to sort of stay invested in a storyline when you're only thinking about it two nights of a month. Yeah. Like it, that's, that's pretty hard to sort There's of There's a lot stay. of times we came back and I couldn't really remember stuff and it takes oh, like away it, from. And without videoing, without, without having the, the video, dude, it, I would be really dude, hard. With, yeah. Without genuinely, without having those recordings, I don't think I would have been able to DM like I did. Like, yeah. I, I just don't think I'd, because the amount of times I would go back on sort of Saturday mornings or Friday nights, like, uh, watching them to sort of be like, oh, wh- what would be the answer to this question? And then have yeah. to go back and, like, sort of go through. When, um, I yeah. think also, yeah, I don't know. I think it would be better to have the DM. I agree recording them because they're privy to all the information i just don't um, want to assume that and someone not have the time to do it right so like yeah, let's say I mean, dale's I running the next I... campaign i don't know that it, i would rather do it and upload it and miss a little thing because i have the time to to invest in uploading it right so yeah you know what i'm saying i, I, I mean the, I, and the only reason i didn't was because i just don't know how to whereas like yeah. all of you guys i'm pretty sure have experience with kind of recording and like all that sort of stuff where whereas i just don't so yeah that was the only reason yeah, i didn't pretty do easy it for me as well i'd um i'd 100 percent be 
be willing to learn and to do it. Obviously, yeah. well, that's something we can set up the next the next campaign you run for sure. I'd yeah, be willing really to help in any way I can. I mean, I'm not doing anything yeah. special, right? Like by any means, I'm pressing record, stop, and uploading it yeah. to YouTube. I was <laughs> like, I'm not editing it at yeah. all. So yeah, I would. Oh, I saw that you ed- edited out my butt cracks. So yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have zoomed in on it and then added the blur. Oh, I still have the original. So there was uh, one thing I edited out of one of the last, like the one I, or two, two or two. Yeah, I did. I noticed um, it. There was a cut between between <laughs> me and Dale. Yeah. yeah, it was more. We were talking about. I think it was like it was more personal things than D and D. So normal. it's just like, eh. yeah, eh, I don't want that on the internet. Yeah. Um, I would 100% um, need two more screens if I was ever going to DM again. The amount of times that I spent switching between fucking programs was ridiculous yeah that would wear me out too oh my god between so, like having obviously because i, I, I want to see you guys fa- your faces when i do stuff so mm-hmm. like I, I always make sure i have you guys up but then also having like rogue 20 up dnd beyond mm-hmm. and then like every other website word documents freaking google search images the amount of times i spent on token generators having to like pull tokens is ridiculous <laughs> My file, oh my, how big is my file for DD? I'm curious. Properties. Oh, it's not even a gigabyte. Oh, okay. Still. All, it's because all of the tokens are like less than. Yeah, yeah like I think. 20, 20, 28 uh, kilobytes. I think one of my goals, I mean, I think it's cool to like have you as part of your character to some degree, because obviously no matter what you do, you're still you, right? But one of my goals in the, the next long-term character I play, I really want to try not to be me, right? Like, like I really want to actively not, because like, like I find that hard to do, obviously, but it's fun it's a, it's a fun idea to explore. Like, I mean, I was really goofy with Ayala and that is me, right? Like I'm just weird. So, uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of things about Ayala that I put myself into her. Uh, but I don't, not that I, that I dislike that. I just would really like to be able to do the character justice as far as that goes. So that's one thing I want to really work on. It's like, like yeah, that's, I want to be a that's note, note taker. That's me. Yeah. I don't know, like, I am not on. like if we're videoing it, I feel like I would prefer to be in the moment than to be worried about writing down notes. No, I know, so. but that's what I want to be. I want to play a character that is a sort oh, of like I see, I see. there's yeah. someone that tries oh, to, yeah, mm-hmm. like there's someone an that investigator, is yeah, 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 like that's kind of the because that's not a character I've ever played before. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's something that I I'm want to try. I'm excited for my character for. They're off part two. Bro, me well, it's too. just going to be a one shot, you know, anyway. Well, yeah, it? you know, but like it's still. Wait, oh, you're talking about the one shot then specifically? Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm excited to play, obviously, but like I'm more keen to play like my next full me too. character that I build and like yep. slowly yep. level up. And I want to like have like nice notes and I want to have good session notes and stuff like that. Like that's what I'm excited to do yeah in, sure in this next yeah. campaign yeah it might be. yeah so yeah. For sure. it took me a while it took me a while to give kira an actual backstory mm-hmm. and i mm. regret that do you think that you, felt... your next carry you'll kind of flesh out more backstory early oh 100 yeah and and i, and, and I want to make well. and kind of uh what crop was saying um create a character that's a bit more detached from me so it's I think maybe more clear to me when I'm being more the character than myself. Yeah. Yeah. Azoth was like so me. Mm. Fucking <laughs> I think just... um... I think it's okay. It's just not something that I want to do again. I want to try actively to do something different. Mm. I think it's okay as a, uh, to be you. <laughs> as a DM, the more information that you put yeah. into a character is so nice. I also think that as players we shouldn't be afraid to work together. Not necessarily to build a backstory together, but like to help develop an idea of why you're working together as an, an adventuring group. Um, I think that there's sometimes for me is a little bit of a disconnect is like, like I end up because I'm trying to be polite, like I end up just going along with whatever we're doing 
even if that maybe doesn't resonate, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's not that I disagree I mean, with what I mean, we're Dale's doing. Dale's really good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Pushing buttons when he needs to as a character. I'm just mm -hmm. like, this is my agenda. Yeah. I kind I of... I, 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 I both envy it and <laughs> it's sometimes like annoys me because like, I'm like it's just doing it too he's doing it so well yeah. <laughs> like damn it but it is like it's like why we ask like we are all individuals but then there's we're kind of like stuck together like we have to but we mm -hmm. don't but we do but we don't yeah. which is something that i'm playing the bit of a dickhead character yeah <laughs> which is something i found that i really I liked food. is just even having yeah, the simple ish uh connection that that tonk and ala had right like the grounded the roots that we had coming into the campaign like just throwing um Ayla into there would have been really complicated for me it would have made it much harder for me to play Ayla. next I campaign think. i'd really like to have ties with at least one other person because yeah it's two campaigns now where i haven't had any and i well something i, I something really liked from well. ferris was amos's ties to fluffy yeah like, i really like, enjoyed that part of Next campaign, There's... I have to be tied to Jamie. It's my so, turn. Everyone... Yeah. The thing is, is it, it doesn't have to oh, just... Everyone, everyone knows each other except Jamie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either one, I'm fine. I'm fine with either. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be friends with Jamie. <laughs> uh, I, just, I heard like... Crumb was like, yeah, I really enjoyed like having anything with Jamie, and then like Ben's like, I really enjoyed anything. You guys like, all right, I just I'm just the one that everyone wants to be attached to the hip by. Like, that's like Bro, I loved that. Fluffy so much, though. I was so jealous of having, <laughs> like, wanting more with Fluffy. Like, he's so I loved him. So Fluffy was the best character. I loved Fluffy. I I enjoyed mm -hmm. playing Tonk, but I I missed the simplicity. I knew of, you were gonna say that. Of to of fluffy. Is that just uh, in game like, mechanics or is it like character, do you think? Both. <clears throat> both. Yeah. I think both. Like it was it was go in or it was rage, go in and hit people as hard as you could. Um I think it's a really good insight into like what sort of characters you like to play. Yeah. Like, as a player. Yeah. Like because uh, obviously I've only played um amos like as an actual character but like me getting to play all these different creatures as different stuff i now know i want to play a mechanical type of character mm, yeah, something mm. that is a spellcaster or a bard or so something like that I, mm -hmm. I i know that that's what i want to do it's mm -hmm. like manip like more combat manipulative like into the yeah, Can't just something that like made like if I can put together combos and stuff like that within my own character, that's something yeah. I enjoy. Um, yeah, and obviously, that's hard to do when you're only playing NPCs was, and monsters and creatures. And I was a like little that. surprised. I mean, Ayla had a lot of things that she could do, so that helped. I was a little surprised that I didn't get more. I was worried about getting bored with playing a fighter. That I just go in, multi attack. Go in, multi attack. But. The, the subclass and some of the homebrew stuff that we did helped a lot with that so did you find that you got bored of kira's um like battle side of things <clears throat> derek helped oh yeah okay yeah derek yeah. helped a lot yeah i was I, there were times where i was just like oh, God, another fucking small room <laughs> or like there's just not yeah. enough space yeah god damn it but there's limitations to anything you play but yeah. i I mean, I don't know how, to, how everyone else felt during certain combats, but there were times where I was just like, ah, oh, if, if, if something isn't my element, it's really not my element. Mm. And I was like, hmm. But yeah. I, I never, f it, I think, yeah, maybe, I think maybe Derek really helped kind of mix it up. Um, but with the little spells here and there and, and stuff, the pipes of haunting, Hitting them every uh, every now and then. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, and with a few like kind of the survival checks, animal checks, stuff like that, the combat and th um, functionality of, of I think exploration. It's part of that is just I don't think that five E really like does eye. rangers justice. I think that there's no, I agree. Rangers <laughs> can be way more interesting than they let them to be. <clears throat> I um yeah, I know you hundred percent on the whatever character i play next any sort of like non-combat ability spells whatever i want to make more use of 
in role playing side of things. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like the two campaigns we've played, we've barely used spells. Like, uh, like I know I did Best as friends, a charm person. I used yeah. that sort of stuff. I know I used Mage Hand a little bit, but like in terms of like minor illusion or um, oh. sort of prestidigitation or thaumaturgy stuff like that. Um, I want to make more use of those sort of even yeah. high level spells yeah. that are like non combat spells. Also, just me personally, if we play again, guidance is being banned. <laughs> I just don't like the the way it plays. I, I'm just not a fan. That's fair. Yeah, I think that I, the I, main... I, I generally don't think it, it makes that much of a different a like difference, but I just don't like the idea that it sort of breaks role play to be like guidance yeah th so like, there, it, i think a lot of times though it the people break the rules with it like it's not used as intended ever like hardly no, ever I think one the, it has to be touched and it you, can't I be reactionary pretty well this way yeah. you changed yeah. it like it's yeah. not like you can't react to something do something like and yeah it's a it's an action here and there it's an action to cast it. We had to actually ask for it for me to be like, be like, hey, I'm about to do this thing. Yeah. Can you can you help me out? Right? Like, yeah, that would I think be. It's just awkward on all parts, to be honest. So I think uh, yeah. if I ever do DM again, I'm just gonna remove guns from like the actual spell list. Yeah, that's not making a thing because I just I, I just don't find it as a clean spell. Like, it, in, it it would it interrupts it would more than it helps. Time, it would take time if you were a caster of guidance to be like, oh, I see Kira walking up to the the side of the cliff to to take a look out of this thing and i i i i push my my arcane abilities onto her sort of thing like it, i don't know it just doesn't yeah doesn't feel which right. is fair so i'm just gonna take it out stuff like bless and stuff like that still works because you use that in the middle of combat like to to cast on something like that makes sense but the only thing um, that i i think that guidance would be makes sense is like the way that you were speaking in role play scenarios where we're like we know we're about to talk to this guard and we're trying to convince him to do something, you know, like stuff like that. But the reactionary casting of it is mega annoying. I get tilted at critical role for doing it a lot. And Matt's yeah, cut, and Matt's cut them back a lot on it as well. Yeah, like, he, he has. has. He's, he's yeah, done he has. well. Like, to do In it, campaign three, it, he's, it is, he's really shut it down, I think. So. It is such a hard thing to do as obviously because they're playing on 5e to just be like, eh, well, this spell that has been existed for however many years, we're just kind of sort of dialing it back. Like, just, and with how many people watching, they're just not going to yeah. agree with it. So I think, yeah, for, for our side of things, um, I just don't think I, I, I like it as a spell. Yeah. Same with... um. There's a couple. I I mean, Dale's not here, but Lehman's tiny tiny hut. That ritual spell. I agree. That interaction where I had those roving. Um, mm, I don't remember what they were. I think they were bandits or something like that. Like when they were there. And, yeah, and you were just kind of in there. <laughs> yeah. It felt really weird to me. Like it just didn't make any sense. Like it, it kind of took the whole being in the wilderness side of things out of the equation so I so i don't that, know if does that have any kind of cost component to it so like i think some of that is no it's a ritual it's a ritual yeah spell. uh but even ritual spells will consume components if they have them right but well not if it's an arcane focus which right. i think he's so well, he's a, an arcane focus. yeah i'm not sure he's he's, I, I don't know i'm pretty sure i questioned it and i did ask it but i find um, it more interesting to be in the environment too right like to have yeah, to like that that surviving and existing in all of Icewind Dale would have been a little bit more complicated, but a lot more interesting if we didn't have the hut all the time, right? Because like Kira, you could have mm -hmm. had a little more like out of combat expertise use of trying to find us somewhere to stay and like you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, like like just navigating the environment. No, I mean if if it's something that you the dm didn't necessarily miss out on like you were cool with that and that's one thing mm -hmm. but i i was thinking that too i was like minute this it bails us out of a lot of just constantly being able to have somewhere <clears throat> very safe to say it's not completely i mean you can um, uh, you can, can have it, you can it. Well, yeah. so it wasn't... yeah i just didn't think about it too much too much and then it just kind of became a thing um, yeah. And I just kind of was like, oh, I'm not going to bother. I yeah. also really wish I'd made more use of random encounters. Mm. 
I was gonna say that I was gonna I was gonna suggest something like that in the next one that we that we do is like, yeah it, there was it a lot just of times seemed... we were we were traveling I just felt like there was we traveled it was travel for traveling like it wasn't like anything to do with it like which it I think I um, I also agree as a DM like that was something I probably missed is that the whole traveling and moving side of things I didn't really kind of plan ahead for it was just like, I mean, that, like that chimera fight that we had in the first campaign. It was defining, but random. Well, it was like a game, yeah. yeah, random, but it gave us our. It literally gave us our name, like yeah. And then, um, and that um, that water dragon that we fought on the boat, that was that dope. was fun. Yeah, that was cool. Like that was that was the one like that you cooked up, which may not have been random, game. but no, for, for you, random. right? But it it, it felt, it felt it like felt a random fight. Yeah, it felt yeah. more like, random it, for us. A tra- but travel was, fight sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. but it was mm. dope. Like it was, that was really, really cool. Like I really enjoyed that. So same yeah. with the, um, the, uh, bandit fight at the, the barracks in the mountain pass. Mm-hmm. 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 I, I really like that fight. Me too. That was a good fight. With, with, that was with a the, tough fight with the Yeti. The, the, was it, right. no, it was the, the wolf. Yeti. So, yeah. wolf. What was the name of the group? It was like something the, like the, the gray wolves or something like that. It was the dire the, Yeti, wasn't it? The snow, the, snow troll. Troll. Was it a, the snow troll. Snow troll. Ice troll. The they, guys that had like the checkpoint that we they wanted yeah, to take. Yeah, the one that. Which we don't know what the consequences of that are either. Like we weren't around long enough to know. Like so the one where. Because I imagine their fam- friends and family were going to be looking for us. <laughs> Wait, was it? Oh, we, right. That one escaped. That point? That's right. Yeah, someone escaped and Havoc that. lost his mind and. Yeah. Yeah. Was the thing I the thing that I wasn't any major. I can't even remember. The thing that I personally the thing I personally don't like about random encounters because we have a lot of them in my my local. We play Pathfinder, Pathfinder. but Pathfinder one. we do a lot of them, and it is fighting for the sake of fighting, and I don't like that. Um, I think there need like to ele- be got to be like an element of randomness to it. Yeah. <laughs> like I think know, those gargoyles don't... when you guys did yeah. the fucking. Yeah. There needs to be consequences to that fight, right? Like, <laughs> it can't just be something that, you know, I don't know, that it just seems trivial that you're doing it like a chore, which can, it yeah. do, it can feel that way if you, with random encounters, but. Yeah. <clears throat> the only time that I, uh, it has felt trivial was the fight outside the mine of Fandelva. The little mosquito where, things? But when those came out, yeah. that, for me, that felt trivial. Mm. Um, yeah. And I think that was because I was following the book. Mm. And that's when it was like, this is a random encounter. Like, yeah. Spot. So I think that was the only time everything else didn't. I mean, that was because I probably didn't do too many. But I think I did. There was maybe one other one where I did it on the fly. Um which didn't necessarily feel trivial, but it wasn't sort of a difficult fight either. It was just sort of a couple of rounds here and there. I think as a DM, you, you should be doing that as a way of resource management for their players. Agreed. Like, because otherwise, I mean, what, between long rest, you basically keep all of your spell slots until that sort of fight for the episode sort of thing. Otherwise, previously, it's really just what you don't use any and then you just go to long rest anyway yep. so i think as a way of doing it having that sort of in between flight a fight making use of a short rest generating hit die then going and fighting sort of thing makes it more applicable rather than sort of just not having anything in between and that's where it also comes into what i was saying before about using spells outside of combat making it more apparent to use those kind of cantrips or, or, or low level spells for role playing side of things which is what yeah. I want to do but yeah okay, guys, I'm going to jump off I got work tomorrow but um, thank you Ben yeah, yeah it was it good was fun. appreciate uh, you guys making the time so can't mm. wait for whatever comes next I both love and hate the way that wrapped up mm. and that's oh, yeah. the beauty of the yep. game Yep. Can you see uh, why I was so keen to wrap it up? Because that's yeah, what I yeah. had been sitting on for like, like a oh, <laughs> week or whatever it was. Like, have it all would you have, inside. if if Tonk had asked again or been insistent, persistent, um, of asking what that guy's name was, 
Oh, dude. Yeah, oh, I had a plan if Kira went with Tonk. Yeah, and I was like, oh. I had a plan. It I was rolled. Gonna be awesome. I rolled. I could have been. I, I'm willing to reveal this. So uh, the ears were cut off to make you realize that he wasn't actually a human, just he looked like one. But if uh, Kira had gone with you, he was going to look like a human, but under the cause of like a disguised self spell or something stronger. Mm. So it's like it looked like someone else that so Kira wouldn't recognize. But then after a moment, uh, like when he became conscious, uh, he would see Kira's face and say something. That was going to be the other way I was going to play it. Um, and then, and then maybe we all go through the portal together. Anyway, that's that was how so I, different. Yeah, I know. That was how I kind so of, different. One I roll. Imagine if I don't ask to go back up there. I obviously mm. you had mentioned well, that it. was also something as well. I mean, I had a plan for that as well. Ayla would I, never I, have I, chosen I, to do that if you hadn't. To go up you were the again. only one. Tonkwood is the only one. Yeah, that he would have. She was I mean, gonna obviously gonna follow, but would have never chosen to. My, it's literally written in my DNA. That if like someone has help, help, needs help, yeah. then you're going to help yeah, them. Yeah, like it's everything on, I do is for the common people. On the Everybody off chance, like, on, on the off chance we leave, what would you have done, Ben? On the, oh, when you leave, yeah. Uh, so basically, it's really frustrating because I wanted the crystal, the ice crystal that Strixnor drops to stay. I only needed one round for it to stay and it was going to dissipate back into the pit. You're going to see the actual like mist my, papers, mm, like yeah. melt back away. In. Yeah. And Derek was going to be um, sort of the, the new big bad, the new big bad. The new, oh, the new and now it's going to be Kira instead. Um, but I, li I like the idea of having a Kira bad guy. But uh, because it, it all gets, she's going to turn, she's going to be a Xena. Yes. All of Joel's, all of Joel's characters turn bad. at the end of campaign or bad. I had a conversation with Ben. We all have to know. We just have to know about it. That's why I was like, if it's going to be an option, I'm going to roll so much because I'm not going to choose. I'm not forcing it. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And it, 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 it feels so much more. Evil. Yeah, I don't mind that. <laughs> it would feel so much more. Um, Natural. rewarding even if it didn't turn out the way i wanted it to just like the just bad roles than to be like uh i just choose not to be with the group anymore like it's yeah. kind of a mm. yeah i get that um but yeah because the crystal did get picked up it was going to be that derek was going to be left there and was going to slowly deteriorate until someone went there and saved him and then it would play out slightly different but someone was i had i have an idea as to who was going to save him but i won't reveal that mm. cool have it, we haven't confirmed that cavadix is dead well i mean cavadix was dead anyway but it's his ghost dead oh. twice <laughs> it's, it's... yeah they're dead all right boys i gotta go i gotta get ready for work so yeah catch you guys right, later thanks again uh, yeah bye